time to set in. Heads thrown back are the result of neck ligaments contracting as the body began to dry. All the evidence pointed to a single dramatic event. In one catastrophic moment, an entire herd of coelophysis had been swept away and buried alive. After 220 million years, the disaster still haunts Ghost Ranch. Lynette Gillette lives with it every day. A geologist, she's been exploring the landscape, looking for clues to how the dinosaurs died. During the late Triassic, New Mexico was part of a vast arid basin, filled with silt and weathered volcanic ash, creating layers of multicolored sediment. Today, these layers have been eroded away, forming the rocky badlands of Ghost Ranch. By studying the rocks, Gillette has uncovered the first link in a tragic chain of events. Rocks tell us quite a bit about what happened to coelophysis, and these particular siltstone rocks often have some evidence of drought. This is the mud that the dinosaurs walked around on, and if you look carefully at this particular piece of siltstone, you'll see that it's very cracked. It has little lines, it has bumps and lumps, and it's been drying. A drought had struck. In a desperate search for water, coelophysis by the hundreds converged on a tiny stream. Then the drought broke. Torrential rains began to fall. Suddenly, without warning, a flash flood tore through the stream bed, drowning everything in its wake. Swept along by the muddy waters, the coelophysis were doomed. But the death of so many would prove a godsend to paleontologists. All segments of the population had been preserved, males and females, juveniles and adults. Most dinosaurs are only known from two or three individuals, and because we have hundreds, we have a chance that's extraordinarily rare, exceedingly rare in paleontology, to, to do biology. It's the same way a modern biologist would, would measure and compare lots of cats and dogs, lots of lions and tigers, to see how they change as they grow up. Well, we can finally do that with a population of dinosaurs with, with our samples here from Ghost Ranch. With literally thousands of body parts to choose from, scientists were able to reconstruct a dinosaur that was obviously very dangerous. Coelophysis was a triple threat in its sensory equipment. It inherited a great sense of smell. The whole muzzle was full of sensory tissue for collecting those little things floating around the atmosphere. The eyes were good too, very like bird eyes, color-sighted eyes for focusing on prey. The eyeball looked sideways so they could see wide over their periphery. Smell, see, hear, snap. To enhance its performance, Coelophysis also adopted a different body. This was a new body type. This was a tail longer and more sinuous. These were thighs longer, stronger. This was a set of torso bones more hollowed out than had ever been seen before. This was the world's first roadrunner. Coelophysis was built for speed. Its name means hollow boned, which made it lightweight and agile. Exquisitely constructed, its body was counterbalanced by its tail allowing it to move upright and pivot, quickly changing course. Long legs meant a longer stride and a faster pace. But how fast could they run? Body types have their distinctive built-in speeds. Take us humans. You go for a walk and built into your body is a nice, easy two miles per hour. That's when your joints and your ligaments and your tendons 
all work together in a nice rhythm, binkity, binkity, bink. Dogs, they have a higher walking speed built into their joints. So, a dog cruising at his comfortable speed is binkity, binkity, bink, three miles an hour. Go for a walk with your dog. The dog wants to be faster. It's pulling on the leash all the time. Three miles an hour versus two. There's another built-in speed. This one's real interesting. Top speed. A human athlete in great shape can do 15 to 20 miles per hour in a sprint. That's 10 times the walking speed. Bing, 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 bing. A dog can sprint at maybe 30, 33, 35 miles an hour. Bing, 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 bing. So why do we care about all of this? Dogs trotting, people jogging, why do we care? We care because we have footprints of coelophysis. Hundreds, thousands from this period of time. We can measure the footprints, and then there's a simple formula that tells you how fast the dinosaur was going as it made the footprints. And the average walking speed for Coelophysis, North America's first common dinosaur, is four miles an hour. Top speed for Coelophysis would be 10 times the walking speed. That's 40 miles per hour. That's a good sprint. Coelophysis could outrun almost anything in its day. For its prey, the nightmare had just begun. It's the twilight of the Triassic and the dawn of the dinosaurs. Ancient reptiles and primitive mammals are leisurely feeding, unaware of what's lurking in the background. Using its remarkable eyesight, 